looked a lot better today with all these guys being back. I thought we had one of our best practices today. Yeah, just a minor camp injury. Uh, shouldn't be out a couple more days. All these little camp injuries have been three or four days at most, and I expect them to be back next week. Do you expect everybody who's hurt to be back for the opener? Yeah, as far as I know, except, you know, obviously except Cordell. Like, how, how did Damian look? He looked pretty good. Pretty good. Today's his first full speed work. Looked pretty good. It was good to have him in there. Ed, with his return, you talk about how many days you've actually had your all your top linemen together working yeah. as a group. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Uh, the first week was a great week for the offensive line. I think that the first week we made it probably through the first week of camp with no injuries, and then we had a bunch of injuries with the defensive line. And then it flipped on the second week. We lost a lot of offensive line, but a lot of defensive line coming back. But I feel now that everybody's going to be back uh, Sunday. I think we should, if nothing happens the uh, next couple of days, we should be fairly healthy. What have you seen from the first few weeks of that tight end battle with Thad and, and Stephon? I'll tell you what now, Thaddeus Moss has had an excellent camp. So has Stefan. Uh, those guys are coming along. TK McClendon is getting better as blocking. Jamal Pettigrew looked good today. Uh, that tight end position is coming alive. Uh, with, with Ray Parker moving over to defense, what did y'all see in him in that transition? He actually moved. He wanted to move. You know, he was playing scout team defense for the offense. And I said, Ray, you like that defense? And Coach, I think I want to try, so I'll let him try. So what do, you, what do you think you can do on that end? He's quick. He's long. He's quick. Uh, he's tough. No. Uh, Coach, you mentioned Georgia Southern. Um, does it help to have a little bit extra time to kind of prepare for that triple option? We need it. Yes, we need it. Dave and I talked to him on Sunday. We definitely need it. And uh, we sprinkle it in a little bit at a time. Our guys are getting used to it, especially the speed of the option. Uh, John Trey Kirkland's playing option quarterback for us. He may be the MVP of the whole week. Uh, he did a great job assimilating their great quarterback. and. The speed of the option. We've got to be assignment sound, know what we're doing. Uh, they're a very good football team up front. They know what they're doing. They lead the nation in turnover ratio, plus 22 is amazing. So, this is a very good football team that we're going to play. You mentioned their turnover ratio. That's something that you guys focused on last year. I mean, mm -hmm. How much is that focus this year? It's a big focus. You know, we're a plus 12, we're a seventh in the country. I challenge the team to be elite this year. And obviously, plus 22 is no more in the country. That's elite. So, we want to be elite. Do you all have a specific number in mind that you all are shooting for? Or do you know, Say it again. Do you all have a, a number that you all have in mind that you're shooting for? You know, you know, you know, anytime you get plus 18, plus 20, you're in good shape. You're about 10 days out. What, what lingering questions do you have right now? Uh, just tackling. Tackling in open space. Being assignment sound, option. Uh, some guys playing for the first time under the lights, catching the ball. You know, Derek Skinner is going to return punts. I think he's going to be fantastic, but he's a freshman returning punts for the first time. You know, Cade Yorks is going to go out there. He's been phenomenal in camp, but he's going to kick in front of 102,000 people. So those things, just new guys, see how they're going to perform. But I'm very confident in this team and this coaching staff. Dante Stark tweeted something that it made it sound like he might be joining y'all soon. Is, did he get eligible? I hope so. Uh, he's doing some work, and uh, he's very close. He's very close, but he's not eligible yet. But uh, things are looking up uh, that he may be eligible by the time school starts, hopefully. Uh, it's going to be down to the wire. Coach, you mentioned Racy McNaps. What are some of the specific things that he's kind of done to put him in a mix and place him over Racy? is very strong. He's one. I think Racy is one of the best special teams uh, players in the SEC. And, uh, he's caught the ball a lot better. He's learned his assignments. He's very strong with his hands. And he's very dangerous uh, with the ball in his hands. You always have to catch him. Oh, yeah. No, sure. But, you know, the preseason game's going to be a walkthrough. Yeah. It's going to be a situational game. But there are some positions that we're not ready to name a starter yet. It's going to go all the way probably up to game time. So, you talked about blockout to noise. What, what is blockout to noise? You know, uh, you know, when we come to work, uh, ignore what, what's being said out there, good, bad, or indifferent. You know, uh, you know these kids, they're on that tweeter machine all the time. And it seemed like. You know, there's no private moments. I think they need to get get on their own. I know they're going to read it, but they got to get on their own, get in their playbook, watch film, work out, eat right, do the things that matter. And I think these guys have done a good job. And uh, just because we rank this or rank that, just because the guys are preseason All-American, that means a hill of beans to us. It shouldn't be a damn thing. we got to be hungry. We've got to be focusing on one opponent at a time. We've got to get better at LSU. We're a long ways away. Has there been a difference in the defense now that you got Delpit back in there? 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he looks good. And Christian practiced a little bit today. He looked good. Uh, the defensive line is – Apu practiced for the first time today. Tyler didn't. So the defensive line is still, still in and out. Uh, it makes a difference as Kelvin Chessel up front rushing the passer. And today he had an excellent day, and he seemed like he's healthy, ready to go. What's been standing out about Thaddeus Moss that you're saying that puts him in that competition? His physicality, blocking. Uh, he, we always knew he could catch. But, you know, Thaddeus Moss, I'll give you an example. It was spring break, and uh, I was in there working out. And most of the players were on, on spring break, and he wasn't. And I said, what's up? He said, I'm staying here because I want to have a great year. So he has committed himself to working out and getting better and is really focused. And uh, hopefully he can have a good year for us. How much has Caleb Vaughn's return you know, made an influence on the defense? It gives a lot of people confidence. He's wearing 18. He's one of the team leaders. It gives us an excellent pass rusher off the edge that we haven't had. It gives us a, a strong guy at the point. And, and leadership, his playmaking ability, he's like an Oregon key out there. Is he different than he was a year ago? Just been his he's stronger. He's bigger and stronger, uh, definitely. Uh, and uh, he worked out hard this summer. I think that, uh, no, in fact, I know when he got hurt, he came back with a chip on his shoulder. He didn't like not playing. So I think he's cherishing every moment being out there. You mentioned the turnover margin on that. How much does he affect the, how that could be positive? You know, sacks and sack calls, fumbles, you know. Um, obviously, if we get a sack, get a tackle for a loss, we're out to drive. Anybody, and it makes a difference. Sorry. Has anybody separated themselves at an inside linebacker where those guys battle? You know, I'm going to tell you now, DeMond Clark is a guy you got to watch. Now, he's coming. Uh, I gave some grades today. There's a lot of 100 percents this week by DeMond Clark. So, him and Jacob and Patrick are battling right there. And Michael's doing well. So, it's going to be a battle. How much of these battles do you think are going to de- – be decided before the game, or you think they're all? I think right before the game. Yeah. I really because you know what? Uh, there's a lot of things to do next week. There's a lot of preparation. We haven't put our full game plan in on uh, see who can play the option, see who understands their reads. Uh, we're going to have to go through the whole week to see who's best at it. As your first game week, the whole Joe Brady thing, is it what you envisioned? Is everything coming together? Like yeah, been, been awesome. Awesome. And, and, and let me tell you something. It starts with Steve Ensman. He's, he's done a phenomenal job. Um, they're in there. He he's got a a little uh, little bed in his office. I don't think he's been home yet. I think they go home. At, they, they they end their meetings at twelve and they get up about five. And uh, he's done a phenomenal job of working. Uh, Joe's put in a tremendous offense. Steve has put in the wrinkles that we've done before in some cases, and I think it's been a tremendous mix. Joe Burrow made a point yesterday to say that Steve is still bringing lots of things to the forefront. No question. Yeah, Steve's a, Steve's, Steve's a good football mind. Uh, he wasn't as well versed in the spread as Joe was and the RPOs. That's why we brought him in. And th- those two guys have gotten together and worked out fine. You said last week you were still looking for that third safety. Anyone standing out there? Yeah, you know, Todd Harris is really doing good. I mean, he has really showed that he's a starter for us. Was, was y'all's ability to trust Joe more thorough throughout last year? Yeah. You mentioned some of the uh, audibles and things. Yeah. Did that kind of lead to wanting to go to this more style offense with Brady in there? Yeah, no question. You, you know, the look overs, you can see everything in the line of scrimmage. Uh, we can make the calls. We can change the calls. We don't have to change the calls. We can let him make the calls in the line of scrimmage as the season goes on. Joe's a, Joe's a pretty sharp quarterback. He's a coach's son. He knows what he's doing. He's always studying. He's pretty tough. With who? Yeah. Well, uh, I think he was eight of ten again last last uh, Saturday. He had another fifty-one yard field goal. He had some excellent days. He had one one uh, bad day. I think it was only fifty percent. He's very strong. The ball gets off his leg very quick. He gets up and he's accurate. And he seems like he's pretty mature. But you know, we'll find out. I've seen Badera Traor and Anthony Bradford mm-hmm. at guard this week. Mm-hmm. Have you seen the develop? Yeah. Uh, we, 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 we played uh, Anthony at guard at the scrimmage because we were a tackle short. And we put Madar back at guard today, and he did tremendous. I think that uh, he's one of the most improved players on the team. I think he can either go in at tackle or guard wherever he's needed. He's the next man up right now. One more for Coach? Yeah, he has said, you know, Joe can play, but his toughness is what mm-hmm. everyone talks about. Yeah. He got hit in that Fiesta Bowl like he did and got up. What did that mean? You know, it changed the whole momentum of, uh, of the game. You know, I mean, uh, we were, we're down 14, whatever. And I, I said, get Miles in. He goes, no. And a couple of four-letter words. He said, I'm going back in. Uh, go get him. <laughs> Thank you, guys.